Bangor. From the great north woods to the rockbound coast and streaming live in HD worldwide at foxbangor.com, more people choose Good Morning Maine. Hello, everyone. Today on Good Morning Maine, a terrible loss for an Aetna family watching as their longtime home goes up in flames. Plus a crisis for emergency crews in Down East Maine who say there isn't enough staff to respond to calls for help. And a special trade show that's teaching farmers about the latest skills and equipment. Good morning and welcome to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith. And I'm Craig Colson. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll have those stories and your forecasts coming up pretty quickly here. But first, we want to tell you about some breaking news that we're really just starting to learn about around here. The FAA has effectively grounded all domestic flights in the U.S. until at least 9 o'clock. They're apparently having trouble with some kind of a computer program that helps keep the air safety, uh, the air safe for travelers. I'll read you a little bit of what it, but it says. It says the effective system is responsible for for sending out flight hazards and real-time restrictions to pilots, and it's known as the Notice to Air Missions, and it's something they all use. That computer system is down, just like computers tend to happen all the time. So until they get that repaired, they can't send that important safety uh, information to the airlines. And um, so they're grounding flights, at least right. until 9 o'clock, while they right. try to figure out what's going on. It sounds like the t until 9 o'clock thing is tentative, hoping right. that they can have it back on there by by then. Um, right, A total of 21,464 flights were scheduled to depart the United States today. Mm. So that's quite a few. There's already been, um, I mean, as of 7.30, there had already been around 1,300 canceled. Um, and I mean, this is nearly 2.9 million passengers. So, so if you're trying to travel today, perhaps even in, in the coming days, because it's yeah. probably going to take a while to figure this all out right. and get everybody back in the air, the people that were planning to travel. The only advice they have so. for people right now is call your airline mm -hmm. specifically. So unfortunately, that's all you can do at this time. Yeah. What a headache. I would not right. want to be those airline workers either trying to deal with that. So I wouldn't be either. kind to them. Right. You know? <laughs> Good point. Good all point. Right. That's all you can do right now. Well, at least we have some nice weather today. So if you, if you have to stick around here, you're planning to go to Florida or something like that, well, yep. this isn't going to help. Take a lap. Do a walk. At yes. least it's going to be <laughs> sunny here today. Right, right. Here's Devin Biggs. Hey, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. We've made it to Wednesday and starting off on the quiet note this morning, hardly anything going on here on the radar in Sally. Maybe some patchy fog developing in a few spots this morning. Shouldn't be very widespread, so you should be okay making that commute to work or a school without much issue. Just be ready for a little bit of patchy fog if you do encounter it. We're going to be watching another system off toward the west that we'll be tracking off toward the east. And at least late tomorrow, at least through Friday, we'll have opportunities for wintry precipitation that will be moving in. A wintry mix possibly switching over to all rain as temperatures rise. The winds today will not be a huge deal at all. Mainly at around 5 miles per hour or less directions will switch around from time to time. But that next system will start to approach by Thursday and we'll start seeing the winds increase as that system starts to move in. But as for today, a lot of sunshine, maybe a few passing clouds. But by tonight, the clouds begin to move in. And there's no chance. It's just a small chance through Thursday. But better chances as we head towards Thursday night. So for today, upper 20s, mostly sunny and just nice out there. North wind at about 5 miles per hour. As we head towards tonight, 16 degrees becoming mostly cloudy with the wind overall looking nice and calm. As we look ahead towards tomorrow, 34 degrees, mostly cloudy again. Maybe a slight chance for snow showers later in the day at southeast wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. We're right at our early forecast for the rest of the afternoon period. A lot of sunshine today. Temperatures reaching for the upper 20s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Craig and Emma. Thank you, Devin. A man accused of murder made his first court appearance yesterday. 47-year-old Matthew Pendleton is accused of killing 47-year-old Kevin Currett of Lincolnville. He was found dead inside Pendleton's home on Friday. According to court documents, Pendleton engaged in conduct that, quote, manifested a depraved indifference to the value of human life, unquote, which resulted in the death of Kevin Currett. During his arraignment Tuesday in Belfast, some members of Currett's family had to be removed from the courtroom following an outburst. Pendleton is expected back in court February 6th and is, in, is currently being held without bail at the Waldo County Jail. A fast-moving fire ravaged a home in Etna, leaving a family devastated over the loss of their home that they had owned for decades. Our Matthew Jaronczyk has more. Multiple fire departments responded to a structure fire that broke out in Etna Tuesday morning. We uh, responded. Carmel got here before we did. Uh, they said the whole whole building was totally engulfed. We were at work and 
got a call saying that the house was on fire, so we got here as soon as we could. According to neighbors in the area, by the time the fire departments arrived, the fire already had a big head start. Firefighters went to work trying to save as much as they could. Unfortunately, they were dealing with a fast-moving blaze. Well, water, we got... Our hydrant down here didn't work, so they had to go put a Puma village to get water, just to get enough crew to fight the fire. Dealing with the loss of their homestead, the Whitleys are thinking of more than the house itself, but what is inside the home they fear is ruined. We just don't understand what we did to have all this go on, and now it's a total loss of the house and everything of my grandfather that he worked for 38 years. It's gone, just like that. A total loss, but they are glad no one was home when the fire broke out. Their German Shepherd King was home at the time, but has not been found. They are hoping he ran off and will return soon. Always came, this was my home, you know, just as much as my aunt and my grandfather's. Matthew Jaroncic, ABC7 and Fox 22. An important meeting will be held in Down East Maine this week to discuss a crisis facing local emergency medical crews. They say some services may have to be cut unless local towns providing more funds. Devin Dagnall explains. When you call 911, there may not be somebody there to, to help. The state of Maine is facing an unprecedented EMS crisis that worsens by the day. Nancy Parrott, the service representative of Petit Manan Ambulance Corps, says that most of the crisis can be attributed to a lack of funding provided for EMS crews by the towns they serve. The reason emergency medical services rely on their towns for a majority of their funding is most insurance providers only cover up to 80 percent of the cost of an ambulance, leaving a large portion of the bill that often goes unpaid. Uh, the, we did a financial analysis, and if you're doing more than 1,800 calls a year, you lose about 400 to $450 every time you go on a call. If you're doing less than 800 calls a year, you're losing $2,000 every time you go on a call. The lack of funding often results in understaffing. Low staffing means that one EMS crew gets multiple calls in their town. They must rely on the help of other crews in surrounding areas. However, if and when one of those other crews respond to help a neighboring town, they also leave their town at risk. When another emergency comes in, we have to co cover each other. So Pleasant River covers, Petit Manan covers their area when they're out. We all back each other up, and it's, it's a crucial system. Parrott says that without more funding, ambulance corps like hers could have to close. She says that if any of these stations were to go under, it would mean a town with multiple emergency calls could have to wait hours for a crew to arrive. In some cases, that could mean the difference between life and death. We had a situation the other day for Melbourne, a critical run, and our backup unit that would be covering this area at the time, they had Musabek, and that would have at least taken 45 minutes from Musabek to Melbourne. Parrott says that there will be a meeting on Thursday afternoon in Columbia Falls in an attempt to educate town officials about the situation and gather support from the public. In Millbridge for ABC7 and Fox 22, I'm Devin Dagnalt. The Maine Department of Corrections has confirmed the death of an inmate at the Mountain View Correctional Facility in Charleston. 71-year-old Dennis Van Hart of Hiram died at approximately 2 o'clock Tuesday morning. In 1996, Van Wart began serving a 60-year sentence for murder. Consistent with the Maine Department of Justice policy, the Attorney General's Office, the State Police, and the Medical Examiner were all notified about his death. More than $5 million in Maine Jobs Recovery Plan grants will be headed to entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs and startups in the state. The money comes from a second round of grants from the Pandemic Recovery for an Innovative Maine Economy Program. The funding is focused on supporting startup companies. 16 Maine organizations have been awarded the money. They will use the funds for initiatives to grow local food economies and food processing, advancing innovative and agriculture and expanding entrepreneurship to more people in Maine. The United States Supreme Court has declined to review a challenge to Maine's first in the nation consumer protection law, requiring cable companies to prorate customers' final month of service. The law was passed by the legislature and was originally set to go into effect in September of 2020. It was stalled when Spectrum filed a suit in federal court. 
By declining to hear Spectrum's petition, the Supreme Court has effectively upheld the legality of the law. Attorney General Aaron Fry said, quote, just as it would be unacceptable for a restaurant to charge for undelivered food or Amazon to charge for an undelivered package, large cable companies should not be permitted to charge for cable that is not provided. I'm thrilled that customers will no longer have to pay after they cancel their subscriptions. I strongly encourage Mainers who didn't get what they were owed going back to September 2020 to request their refunds. The Bangor Area Recovery Network, also known as BARN, launched its new Recovery Justice Program. The program will provide community-based recovery support to incarcerated individuals, as well as those recently released from incarceration and first-time offenders. The goal is to help these individuals enter or continue recovery from substance use disorders. BARN's Recovery Justice Program Coordinator Angela Walker says the program will collaborate with law enforcement agencies and correctional facilities to build and develop these new services. And we will be resourcing out with local agencies in the area to make sure that like the whole their whole well-being is taken care of. The program is made possible by $273,000 in American Rescue Plan Act funds, which were granted to Barn by the Penobscot County Commissioners. Doing some very important work over there. Absolutely. Yeah. It's always good to have some support when you're in a transitional yeah. phase like that. So it makes sense. Well, the time now is 8.11. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, we'll visit a special trade show in Augusta that's keeping farmers up to date on the latest skills and equipment. But first, another check of our forecast. A mostly sunny day today with highs near 27 degrees. Mostly cloudy with lows around 16 tonight. Tomorrow, a mostly cloudy day. A little bit warmer with highs near 34 degrees. Come bowl a few games here at Bangor Brewer Bowling Lanes. We're one of the only Candleton Bowling Alley Centers in Maine. Conveniently located in the heart of Brewer, you always have the opportunity to simply bowl for fun. However, you can also join a league. We have youth leagues, adult and senior leagues. Now don't forget, we also host birthday parties for under $100, and gift certificates are also available. Give us a call right away at 989-3798 to make reservations for your birthday party today. Rowell's Garage has been serving customers in the greater Dover-Foxcroft region since 1946. Our goal is not just selling you a vehicle, but also giving you quality service to maintain your vehicle at peak performance. Browse our inventory online or in person. Whether it's a car, truck, or SUV, we can put you in the vehicle that is right for you. Sales, service, and parts. Rowell's Garage, doing business the right way every day. When it comes to winter footwear, warmth, waterproof, and safety matter most. Take the drive today to Comfort Shoes and more in Newport and discover the latest in winter boot technology. We've got boots rated from minus 60 to zero degrees Fahrenheit to keep your feet warm in any weather. Check out the new materials guaranteed to keep your feet dry. Relieve the anxiety of slipping and falling this winter with a new Navitech with grippers built right into the sole. Just flip it and clip it and you're ready to go. Be prepared this winter. Take the drive today to Comfort Shoes and more in Newport. Super Wild Card Weekend kicks off on Fox. Don't leave nothing on this field. First on Saturday, Christian McCaffrey and a red hot Niners team Touchdown! are primed and ready for a run at the title. Now they'll take on Geno Smith and the Seahawks. Got it! Then on Sunday, Daniel Jones and the Giants what a play. take on Kirk Cousins and the Vikings. Let's go! Saturday and Sunday on Fox. All part of Super Wild Card Weekend. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine. An annual trade show has returned to Augusta, giving people in the agriculture field a chance to learn about the latest technologies and practices to be more successful. David Ledford takes us there. The Maine Agricultural Trade Show kicked off its first in-person gathering in two years at the Augusta Civic Center. The event brings together farmers and dozens of businesses from across the state to network and collaborate on how to produce better agricultural products for Maine. However, for many at the event, including University of Maine Cooperative Extension representative Tara Marble, the three-day expo is also a chance to spread awareness about Maine's dwindling population of farmers. The um, population of Maine's average farmer is actually getting older, which means there are less people who are coming into the industry. No one is sort of going into that field. Despite steady business for remaining farms, 
Some say that the declining farming population has already begun to have an effect on the industry. Dairy consumption across the country is the highest it has ever been, but there are less dairy farms producing the same amount of milk for all of the number of mainers that we have. Others are hoping to recruit young farmers to help to solve this issue. We're looking for growers. One of the goals of the Maine Grain Alliance is to provide them with seed so that they can help them make a living. In addition to opportunities for farmers on the show floor, the event will offer presentations on current agricultural trends and research, and even provide certification courses for those interested. The trade show will run from January 10th to the 12th, and there is no cost to attend. In Augusta, David Ledford for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. To learn more about the event, visit maine.gov slash DACF. And today will be the Forestry Forum, I believe, so it's still going. The Maine Organic Farmers and Gardeners Association revealed the winner of this year's artwork contest for the 2023 Common Ground Country Fair. Artist Rebecca Lowell's piece, Monarchs and Milkweed, unveiled at this year's agricultural trade show, will be used in all promotional materials for the upcoming fair, including posters and pamphlets. According to fair director April Bouchard, the, out the artwork represents more than the fair itself. We're thrilled this is something that we do every year uh, so that we, we can like lift up local artists and they also help support us and, and really help um, current farmers and also people who are interested in farming. The annual fair will take place this coming fall from September 22nd to the 24th. In addition to food and live music, the events will feature more than 600 educational workshops and 400 local artisans for Mainers to check out. To learn more, visit mofka.org slash the fair. It's always a big event when that happens. Probably even more important these days. More people are trying to grow their own food, that kind of thing. Right. You go there and I know. learn how to do it. It's an important <laughs> part of our economy. They're trying to stimulate that. It's very yeah. cool. Well, the time now is 8.17. Coming up after the break, still no winner in that massive mega millions lottery. We'll hear from people dreaming of becoming a billionaire. We'll be right back with the details. Behind every keepsake, there's a memory. Behind every photo... There's a story. Behind Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration, there's people giving back by bringing back what was thought to be lost. The details, the time, and the expertise, all packaged up behind a name that Mainers have trusted for over 35 years. Statewide commercial and residential services. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. You keep the memories, we'll handle the rest. Realtors at Morrison & Company with Next Home Experience have been serving satisfied clients since 2016. With more than $25 million in sales for 2022 alone, we hold the expertise to get you from under contract to closing during this very personal experience. Our modern and hands-on approach will get you where you want to be, faster and with less hassle. Call us today for your real estate options. Dad, not another showing. <laughs> Who can you call when you need immediate help, any time of day or night? Always giving you and your family peace of mind. AAA's legendary roadside assistance is a network with over 50,000 vehicles that respond to more than 32 million assistance calls every year. If something happens and we're broken down, my family's not going to be stranded. There are so many benefits to membership, and AAA is there if you're locked out of your car, need a tow, run out of gas, have a flat tire or a dead battery. You know, if you have one flat tire or one battery service, that membership fee pays for itself. Wherever you go, wherever you are, you can trust AAA to be there when you need them. Join today and a full year of AAA membership is just $53. We'll waive the membership admission fee and as a special bonus, you'll receive a one-year membership for an eligible family member. Don't wait another second. Call to join AAA right now. There have been 24 Mega Millions drawings since the last jackpot was claimed about three months ago, and there's, there was still no winner during last night's drawing. The lack of a mega winner causing the pot to swell to more than a billion dollars. Now, folks across 45 states are lining up and plunking down their money, hoping to become the country's next billionaire. Fox's Casey Stiegel has the story. I'm going to hit the lottery. $2 buys you the right to dream about winning the lottery. 
And folks all across the country are plunking their money down, hoping to hit that gigantic jackpot. They all have dreams, of course. Who doesn't? The Mega Millions jackpot soaring to an incredible $1.1 billion, surpassing the billion dollar mark for the fourth time in just over four years. The prize has been steadily climbing since the last jackpot win in October, making it the third largest prize in Mega Millions history. I just bought two, but I have some more in my pockets. <laughs> so I'm trying to win as much as I can. We've all heard the chances of winning are not in our favor, but the actual odds are one in more than 300 million. And if there is a lucky winner or winners, lottery officials say most will opt for the lump sum instead of annual installments paid out over 29 years. The estimated cash payout for Tuesday's drawing is more than $500 million, depending on which state you live in. That's a lot of green, so how do you spend it all? I'm going to Mexico. We got to play for mom so we can buy her a big mansion. Probably give a substantial portion to charity take a good portion, invest it, um, and live comfortably. And if you do hit it big, experts advise keeping your winning confidential. That is, until you get a team of lawyers, accountants, and financial advisors in place. In Dallas, Casey Stiegel, Fox News. So that drawing, I believe it will be Friday night. The Drac jackpot now expected to be around $1.35 billion. It's a lot of money. What, what would you do with that? I know we keep asking that, but... Reevaluate my life. Mm -hmm. for step number one. Step number two, um, lawyers. Right. From there. Financial advisors, <laughs> yes. that kind of thing. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> yeah. Charities. Yes. Right. All the charities I've always wanted to help, but I haven't had enough hands. There and, you go. And dollars. Yeah. What I'd about you? I'd head to Lowe's or Home Depot and buy cool. it all. That's I, tangible. I, yeah, I like tools and things yeah. like that. I also want to, you know, I want to do some good with it. I mean, you could do so much money, but I won't get, get all fruit about that You can always, you could be now. volunteering your time and building all the things that we need. So you that sounds fun. Fix societal problems if, and everything. If I if I won the lottery too, I would help you with that. Yeah, I also want a really cool house with a lazy river. A lazy river. Yeah, it's an ongoing dream of mine. You know the lazy rivers that can float around. An the ongoing house. dream and a small do and a miniature donkey. And right? a miniature donkey. And this lazy river can kind of go into the living room. Everybody can just get on their tubes right there yep. and go tubing and. And with this out. amount of money, you'd be able to guard fully against mildew. Mildew, right, does, mildew, yeah. and mold do not affect you when well, you when, when you win the mega others million. Too. You can come on over to Craig's house and we'll go on the lazy river. <laughs> okay. Big water slide. Yep. Okay. Zip lines. I feel like some NBA star did something like this at one point. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Okay. Anyway, that's yeah, what okay. I want to do. <laughs> I like it, Craig. That's let's a good plan. Let's turn our attention to the weather now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Devin Biggs is creative <laughs> over there, too. Let's let me, throw it over. Let me dream. Yeah. All right, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. Overall, not too bad out there this morning. Again, a lot of clear skies. You might notice some patchy fog, but it will be very hit and miss in a few spots. Observations haven't shown much fog this morning, so we should be okay. It shouldn't be anything widespread should we encounter that. But we're going to be watching our next system located right about in here, actually. And we're going to be watching this thing tracking off towards the east over time. And at least by tomorrow night through Friday, a wind stream mix switching over to rain will be expected with some warming temperatures that will also begin to move in. And I'm sure many of you have heard about the activity going on in parts of California with this area of low pressure right here. And just flows of moisture moving in as well. Plenty of rain and snow in places that have seen just too much of it in a short amount of time. So moving forward, though, again, for today, here in our neck of the woods, a lot of sunshine, maybe a few passing clouds out there. But by tonight, more clouds will approach ahead of our next system. And most of Thursday should be dry as clouds moving in and slight chances for snow later in the day. Better opportunities will move in later on as we head towards Thursday night and parts of Friday with some snow in areas. So it's switching over to rain with temperatures that will be rising over time. So the general idea looks a little bit like this. So the system will begin to move in. Here's 6 o'clock in the evening on Thursday. Most of this will start to move in. A little bit of a wintry mix expected as we'll see some snow and some rain. But notice the transition line moving to the north. So we'll see this switching over to all rain with temperatures that could get close to 50 at times as we head towards your Friday and some gusty winds as well. But notice the timing of the system. A lot of this will be out of here by Saturday. So by Saturday afternoon, most of the activity will be out of the area and we'll be done with that overall. But more precipitation, again, at least this is going to count some of the melted down snow and all the rainfall expected to. One to two inches of rain before we're all finished up. So 
looking pretty decent out there overall. And a little bit of snow in the northern ends of the state as well. Not so much for our neck of the woods, so maybe a few inches early before it all melts, and maybe a little bit more further off towards the north before some of that melts, of course, with the rising temperatures and the rainfall expected. Our average high temperature is 28 degrees for this time of the year. To switch over to temperatures real quick, we'll be in the upper 20s today, so right near average. Middle 30s Thursday, getting close to 50 degrees for your Friday, maybe falling just a little bit short, and cooling off again to the 20s and 30s moving forward for the next several days afterward. So your forecast for today, upper 20s, mostly sunny. North wind getting up to about 5 miles per hour. Later on tonight, 16 degrees, mostly cloudy, with the wind overall looking nice and calm. Looking ahead towards tomorrow, 34 degrees, mostly cloudy, a slight chance for snow later in the afternoon. Southeast wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's a look at your extended forecast. So our winter mix switches over to all rain for your Friday. Temperatures in the upper 40s. We start to dry out by Saturday. Mostly cloudy temperatures in the mid-30s. Upper 20s on Sunday with a mostly sunny sky. Angie's list is losing the list. From now on, it's just Angie. So what happens to all the people that needed the list? Oh, yeah, everything still works. We just made it better. We even let you book services instantly now. Start your home project at Angie.com. Come try one of our daily specials at Pat's Pizza in Hamden. Tuesday spaghetti or ziti with meatballs or sausage, only $5.50. Wednesday, large one topping pizza, only $8.50. Thursday, get an oven baked wrap for only $6. Friday is fish and fries for only $8. And Saturday, get a small one item pizza with a fountain soda, only $8. Bring the family to Pat's Pizza, 662 Main Road, North Hamden. Bob's presents 2023 Furniture Resolutions. Resolution number 12, live without regrets. Comparison shopping is tough. Both of these sofas power recline. Both have USB ports, but my Avenger power reclining sofa has comfy Boba Pedic seating and a neat drop down table with cup holders. Theirs doesn't. My Avenger is only $9.99. Those other guys charge $18.35. You're too savvy for that. Live without shopping regrets with my Avenger sofa. Bob's discount furniture. Furniture solutions to your resolutions. When Cat Tracks in LaGrange wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. Cat Tracks in LaGrange is your dealer for Hewitt Lifts and Rolodox with the goal to get you on the lake faster than anyone else. Name a place you love being naked. Does Steve sing her a song? Get super shy. Pull out flowers. Can't you look at me? No, ma'am. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to make eye contact with you. <laughs> only reason I'm asking you this because it's on the car. <laughs> Steve, you would have asked me that in your younger days. Family Feud, the only choice. Weeknights at 7 on Fox 22. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine. And now, new images of the flood disaster in California. And more rain is headed their way. The deadly parade of storms slamming the state in recent days. More evacuations are now underway. ABC's Christy Alito has the details. This morning, the death toll is expected to rise from the catastrophic parade of storms slamming California. The unrelenting weather has dumped 36 inches of rain on parts of the state since Christmas, killing at least 17 people. Two recent deaths were from lightning strikes, and a boy remains missing after floodwaters swept away his mother's car. We've had less people die in the last two years of major wildfires in California that have died since New Year's Day related to this weather. Now, forecasters warn the storms will continue for at least another week with, quote, enormous cyclone poised to bring up to 10 more inches of rain to Northern California in the coming days. And east of San Francisco, the entire community of Planada has evacuated because of rising flood water. In Southern California, Pasadena police say this driver of this Tesla lost control in the rain, slamming through a wall and into a pool. Two teachers at a nearby school saw the crash and rescued the driver. Emergency crews had to pull a woman and a girl to safety after two vehicles ended up falling into this massive sinkhole. Another sinkhole in Santa Barbara County damaged 15 homes. Hey, you missed the spot. At Union Station in Los Angeles, golf carts were needed to shuttle passengers from the flooding. And it's not just California. Ten states are under alerts for severe weather. 
Well, meanwhile, the search for a missing Massachusetts woman has taken a grim turn. Investigators were spotted digging through a transfer station yesterday, looking for evidence in the disappearance of 39-year-old Anna Walsh. Authorities confirmed they found a number of items that could be related to the case. They include blood, a hatchet, a hacksaw, a rug, and cleaning supplies. The mother of three was reported missing by her co-workers back on January 4th. Her husband, 47-year-old Brian Walsh, is currently charged with misleading police, claiming he lied to investigators about his whereabouts around the time she vanished. Investigators are also testing blood stains and a bloody knife found in the couple's basement. Protests in Mexico City over a new migration agreement between the U.S. and Mexico. Demonstrators gathering in Mexico City Tuesday, angered over a new plan, sending 30,000 migrants per month from Cuba, Haiti, Venezuela, and Nicaragua back across the border. The number of migrants crossing the U.S.-Mexico border has skyrocketed during Biden's first two years in office. The protests taking place as Biden, Mexican President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau meet at the National Palace in Mexico City for the North American Leaders Summit. Well, we're learning more this morning about those classified records recently discovered at a private office once used by President Biden. The documents date back to his time as vice president in the Obama White House. And now Biden himself is breaking his silence about the discovery. ABC's Justin Finch has more. At a summit in Mexico, President Biden addressing those classified records while adding some distance, suggesting they were brought to his former office without his knowledge. I was briefed about this discovery and surprised to learn that there were any government records that were taken there to that office. Sources tell ABC News Biden's lawyers discovered roughly 10 classified documents, some marked top secret, all dated between 2013 and 2016. The New York Times reports the papers include briefing materials on foreign countries from when Biden was vice president. They've turned over the boxes to the archives. And we're cooperating fully. Trump appointed U.S. Attorney John Lausch now investigating. That probe coming as a special counsel investigates why former President Donald Trump took hundreds of classified records with him to his Mar-a-Lago home. I have to eat their words, but the hypocrisy. The Republican-led House Oversight Committee also investigating. But there are critical differences between these cases. ABC has learned it does not appear Biden personally asked for the documents to be moved from the White House. While Trump knowingly took hundreds of classified documents, some marked top secret when he left office. The White House insists Biden's legal team immediately informed archives as soon as they discovered those documents. Whereas Trump refused to hand over the classified material for months, even resisting a subpoena before the FBI finally searched his Mar-a-Lago estate. And more questions remain about those Biden records, including why were his lawyers packing up his old office? And could there be anything in those records that could damage the president politically? Still to come here on the second half of our show, we'll hear from the chef of Bissell Brothers in Milo, who's cooking up a locally sourced protein, which is simmered in heritage. Plus, we'll get a recap of the rainy but not dampened Golden Globe Awards. Those stories and more as Good Morning Maine continues. Toyota's all-wheel drive vehicles not only conquer the elements, Toyota conquers its competitors by sheer selection. You see, Toyota has 20 different all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive models. That's more than Subaru, more than Honda, more than Jeep. Conquer most anything with the adventure-seeking all-wheel drive RAV4 or the powerful all-wheel drive RAV4 hybrid, both with Toyota Safety Sense technology included. See your New England Toyota dealer, your all-wheel drive headquarters. Toyota, let's go places. Bath fitter is a better way to remodel your tub. Precise measuring means the perfect fit. The bath fitter tub over tub process means no mess or stress. A custom made tub and seamless wall mean a watertight fit. Premium acrylic means it lasts a lifetime. And all this together means a great value. Bath fitter, it just fits. Visit bathfitter.com to book your free consultation. You're watching Fox 22, Bangor.
Welcome back to Good Morning Maine. Today is Wednesday, January 11th, 2023. It's 1-11. It's good mm. luck. Somehow. So, it, something it just like is. that. Yeah. Yes. And today is National Human Trafficking Awareness Day, as is the entire month of January, as it's being recognized as National Slavery and Human Trafficking Prevention Month. So there's all sorts of things going on for education purposes this month about human trafficking. So what is it, though? What's human trafficking? It's the practice of exploiting adults and children for use as commodities, meaning training them, trading them as objects in conditions of sexual and labor servitude. It's also known as modern slavery. Statistics from safehorizon.org show us that nearly 25 million people were victims of forced labor in 2017. And this practice of forced labor in the private economy generates an estimated $150 billion in illegal profits internationally per year. A really tough topic to talk about and think about, but it's it's important to just have those conversations because you know it, it affects every area of the world. It really does, and it's it's all over the place. And we we kind of support it in ways with the products that we buy that, without that realizing sort of thing. it. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's important. It's just a good conversation to have, and hopefully our products can move away from that. And with awareness, we can have oh, this product is you know it's mm-hmm. free. Tr- um, what's the what's the Term. I don't remember. Free trade or it, it, yeah, something there's like a stamp it'll, on it, products. It'll make you feel better about though about what you're doing. Though. It's certified so. like this is fairly yeah. traded. A yeah, fair I think trade. that's it, like certified yes. fair trade or something. Yes. There we go. We'll look into that. We got that. You can learn more though easily by visiting safehorizon.org. On this day in history, back in 1922, we see an historic invention in medicine. That's when insulin was first used on humans to treat diabetes. As medical scientist Frederick Bant, what's his name? Banting. Banting. Okay. I didn't see the last word there, injected a 14-year-old diabetic with insulin. In 1935, Amelia Earhart flies from Honolulu to Oakland, California, nonstop, of course. And in 1949, on this day, the first snowfall was recorded (laughs) in Los Angeles, California. Probably freaked them out, too. What is this when they came Right, so. right. I know. I'd like to see how much they got. Yeah, we'll have to look into that, too. Right. There's photos. It's, there's plenty of photography during that era. Well, for birthdays today, we have two oddly juxtapositioned people. We have founding father Alexander Hamilton, who served as the first secretary of the Treasury from 1789 to 1795, and famously died following a duel with Aaron Burr. And for a living and well celebrity birthday, it's singer-songwriter Mary J. Blige's birthday today, who's 51 years old. I love her yeah, music. She is full of soul, too. Right, you know, Very right. unique voice. She started so. when she was wicked young, and she's still doing well. She still yeah. looks great now, so yeah. it's really exciting. And Alexander Hamilton, he's still remembered <laughs> around here today. That did they make a musical? It's Hamilton, Hamilton right? Hamilton, right. My kids sing it. They know every word to that. I'm so. ignorant to the music of Hamilton. Yeah, I know it's it's um it, it has a cult following now, mm. so I didn't even go there because I will mess it up. I'll yeah. botch something. But yeah, it's it's been memorialized really well in, in that um, musical, which is cool. A big show and it's still going strong on I know. Broadway. I'll have to watch it. Yeah. Time for our forecast. Looks like a sunny day today, perhaps some messy weather moving in later in the day tomorrow. So get ready for that. Yep. Here's Devin Biggs. Hey, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. We've made it to Wednesday and starting off on the quiet note this morning, hardly anything going on here on the radar in Sally. Maybe some patchy fog developing in a few spots this morning. Shouldn't be very widespread, so you should be okay making that commute to work or a school without much issue. Just be ready for a little bit of patchy fog if you do encounter it. We're going to be watching another system off toward the west that will be tracking off toward the east. And at least late tomorrow, at least through Friday, we'll have opportunities for wintry precipitation that will be moving in. A wintry mix possibly switching over to all rain as temperatures rise. The winds today will not be a huge deal at all. Mainly at around 5 miles per hour or less directions will switch around from time to time. But that next system will start to approach by Thursday and we'll start seeing the winds increase as that system starts to move in. But as for today, a lot of sunshine, maybe a few passing clouds. But by tonight, the clouds begin to move in. And the snow chance is just a small chance through Thursday. But better chances as we head towards Thursday night. So for today, upper 20s, mostly sunny and just nice out there. North wind at about 5 miles per hour. As we head towards tonight, 16 degrees becoming mostly cloudy with the wind overall looking nice and calm. As we look ahead towards tomorrow, 34 degrees, mostly cloudy again. Maybe a slight chance for snow showers later in the day. That southeast wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. All right, our hourly forecast for the rest of the afternoon period. A lot of sunshine today. Temperatures reaching for the upper 20s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Craig and Emma.
Thank you, Devin. A chef from Bissell Brothers and Milo is cooking with one of the country's oldest sources of meat, the American bison. Chef Joe Robbins says it's his favorite protein and one that's grown right here in Maine. Our Jody Hersey gives us a sample. I had an uncle in my family that was like, out of the males, he was the one that cooked the most, so inspired by him a little bit. Four days a week, Chef Joe Robbins is tapping into his roots while he's cooking and plating dishes at Bissell Brothers in Milo. Robbins, who is a Penobscot native, loves using bison meat in his Navajo tacos. Um, we get all of our bison from Bigelow Fields, which is in Eustis, Maine. Uh, Mike and Nicole Weaver are first generation bison farmers. It's a protein that's a customer favorite at the restaurant and an item that caught the attention of Yanasa TV. They more or less are trying to show people um, how important bison is. I mean, it's our original mammal of, of this continent. If it's the natural thing that's, you know, eaten our grassland for the last thousand, two thousand years, it makes so much sense. Whether or not Yanasa TV is able to get its episode about Chef Joe's Navajo tacos on a network or even a streaming service is still uncertain. However, Robin says going back to our roots and really relying on what is homegrown and raised on our soil just might be the best ingredient for the future. If our food doesn't get documented and figured out in the next couple decades, like it goes away completely because there's no place in the world that's going to cook it. Um, so that's kind of important that we get it documented and have it be a part of history. In Milo, I'm Jody Hersey for ABC7 and Fox 22. Nice to keep those old recipes going for future generations, too. Absolutely, absolutely. Done. And I know indigenous practices mm -hmm. didn't always write things down for right. documentation and for history purposes, so that's really cool that he's taking it upon himself to do that yeah. and sharing it with all of us. I'm going to take it upon myself to document the taste of his tacos one of these days. Gotta that's a good goal. To, head up to Milo. That's a, good, that's a good goal. Bison tacos. <laughs> Yum. Still to come here this morning, Tyler Cruz and Ryan Sudol will have the latest with local sports. Don't go away. Looking for a new work experience? Fox and ABC Bangor are partnering with local employers to feature the best local job opportunities, like this one. Bonham Masonry is currently hiring for general laborers and experienced masons. On-the-job training is available for those with no experience. We offer paid time off, travel pay, IRA, and health benefits. If interested in applying, please contact Dan Bonham at 323-5304. General Rental Center has been serving Central Maine with equipment and tool rentals for more than 30 years. Our extensive inventory contains everything you need to get the job done right. Our professional knowledgeable staff is here to make sure that you get the highest quality rental items to complete your project and that they have been serviced and maintained to the highest standards. Power brooms to get that sand off the lawn, leaf blowers, brush chippers, stump grinders, aerial lifts, tillers, and excavators. We rent most everything. If you don't see it in our online catalog, please ask for it. If we don't have the item you need, we would be happy to help you find it. Leona May's Antique and Gift Shop is now open in Newport. Our unique building is a converted 1800 single family home that we've given a new life to. A home for treasures, from antiques, collectibles, unique gifts, and so much more. Come make the rounds throughout the many rooms on all three floors as you wander back in time or find a unique gift that's perfect for that special someone or that hard to buy for a relative. So come visit us today. Leona May's Antique and Gift Shop, 147 Main Street, Newport. This is Sheldon Cooper's Theory of Relativity. Ah! Young Sheldon, five times a week on Fox 22. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. Maine men's hockey series sweep against Anchorage was a thrilling one, especially on Saturday in the second game, where a new face had his first signature black bear moment. Ryan Sudol has the story. 
After dropping a sweep to Colgate, Maine men's hockey got back on track this past weekend with a sweep of their own against Anchorage. It was huge, you know. When we were in Colgate, it was we had a tough go. Uh, you know, those are two games we really want back. Uh, but, you know, you can't look in the past. We just haven't had to put it behind us and, and play the right way, and that's what we did. Both games were one-goal games, including Saturday's 4-3 thriller, where the Black Bears won in overtime off a goal by sophomore Cole Hansen. I was just lucky enough to put it home, and the crowd went crazy, which will be a really good memory for me, for sure. Good to see a guy step up and make a play in overtime. It's fun to see guys when they realize that what their potential might be and then they get an opportunity, and then they take advantage of opportunities. Hansen transferred from Colgate in the offseason and took the chance to go to UMaine as a means to surround himself with something special. I just wanted to go somewhere that had a, had a really good culture and that, was one, that wanted to build something, and uh, this seemed like the spot, and uh, I'm really happy with my decision for sure. Black Bear Nation is happy with his choice too. He has five goals, tied for the second most on the team. Head coach Ben Barr says his abilities come from his physicality on the ice. He plays really hard. He plays hard and he can skate. You know, he's a strong kid. You know, he's not a huge kid, but he's strong. Uh, it just makes you effective. The Black Bears hope everyone's effectiveness will bring success in this weekend's series against conference foe UMass Lowell. A quite meticulous squad to prepare for. They play hard, they play tight, and you know they, they kind of play the same type of game we want to play. A lot of details and, and you know not giving up a whole lot. We, we got to match their details and their, their defensive attitude because if we don't, uh, it's going to be a long weekend. Reporting for ABC 7 Fox 22, I'm Ryan Sudol. All right, thanks for that, Ryan. Looking forward to that weekend series this weekend at the Alphon. Let's stay with the Black Bears now, and we'll just head across the lot to Alphon Stadium. Just a day after the college football season officially ended, Maine football released their full 2023 schedule. They kick off 235 days from Tuesday at Florida International, playing them for the very first time. And then they head to FCS Powerhouse, North Dakota State, 17-time national champion for the first time as well the week after that. Their home opener and conference opener is the following week when the Rhodey Rams come up. And then they'll head to William & Mary. They host Stony Brook and then head to Richmond. They will play Long Island, Campbell, and Hampton before the bye week. And that bye week is very strategically placed right before closing out the season with the battle for the Bryce Cowell musket over in New Hampshire. And that's a big one. And I'm pumped that Rhode Island's coming up to Maine. It's been since 2019 since the Rams were up in Orno. Let's stay in Orno and over to the high school scene now. We will hit the hardwood Red Riots in action on Tuesday for a boys and girls doubleheader. We'll start with the girls, the Trojans coming from over on over from Bar Harbor on Tuesday. MDI looking to make a push here in January. Riots looking for win number one. Third quarter, Trojans up. Ball goes inside to Molly Gray, and she's going to finish through traffic and the foul. Couple plays later, same thing. Another bucket from Gray on the inside. A little triangle offense there. She would get that one to go off the bank, but Orno would fight, though. Here is Dakota Shorey recovering the loose ball, pulling up and splashing home the three from the outside, but MDI was in control all game. This one's going to go to Mallory Dunbar on the left elbow. A little, little skip pass here. She's looking to pass, decides she's open, and she twicks the open three. Trojans pick up win number four, 53 to 19 is the final. All right, same matchup here with the boys. Orno looking to improve to 9-1 and one with a win over the visiting Trojans. We're going to pick this one up right at the beginning in the first quarter. Trojans are going to strike first. It's going to be Spencer Lorendo. He swings it over and hits Caden Reed. He nails the long-range jumper off the catch and shoot. Trojans up 5-0 early, but Ben Francis now on the other end gets to his spot. Fakes, pulls up. He gets the mid-range to go. And then it's the other Francis, Will Francis. He finds Pierce Walston on the inside, gets the bucket. Good ball movement there. Back and forth to start, though. This one is Cal Hodgden for MDI. He scores on the inside for the Trojans. Tough finish inside, but the Riots would roll on to win. There is Pierce Walston on the fast break. Win number 9, 68-54 is the final. All right, we're going to head down to VZ now at Eastern Maine Sports Academy. Another Downies team paying a visit to the area. It's Machias and Bangor Christian going at it. First quarter here, the Patriots would strike first. This ball is going to go to Ab Abby Brown on the inside. Nice pass from Lindsey Durst. Two to nothing, Patriots. But Machias would fire back after that. Nice move here from Skylar Gray or Skylar Tinker. She gets the bucket for the Bulldogs on the inside. Bulldogs again. This time it's going to be Jaden 
Anderson. She's going to pick up three the hard way and one right there with the left. And then it's Jada Case. She is money from mid range. Machias wins this one 46 to 20. All right, so the time we have for sports. We'll be right back. Now. Brandywine Graphics makes it easy. We are the top source for screen printing, embroidery, branded merchandise, and direct-to-garment printing. With 25 years' experience, state-of-the-art equipment, and a commitment to excellence, why trust your apparel products with anyone else? And now, Brandywine Graphics can easily launch online stores for your school or organization. Simply design your products from brands like Eddie Bauer, Carhartt, and more. Share the link and we'll do the rest. Like we said, Brandywine Graphics makes it easy. Find out more at brandywinegraphics.com or at our Hamden location. Now what? You say it when things go wrong. At Prudential, we think you should say it when things go right, too. Like when you score your dream job, sell your business, or discover she's smart, really smart. Now what? Here's what. You connect with Prudential's rock-solid team serving over 50 million people with investment, insurance, and retirement know-how. Who's your rock? Visit Prudential.com or speak to an advisor today. When you're ready to tackle your next building project, no matter how big or small, depend on Hammond Lumber Company for the products and services you need. The knowledgeable staff at Hammond Lumber will be with you every step of the way and keep your project on schedule. From free estimating and project planning to design and drafting services, an extensive product inventory with a wide variety of brands to choose from, and of course, Hammond delivers from any of the locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. Hanks Husqvarna is your full-line Husqvarna dealer with two convenient locations, 32 Old State Road in Carmel and 19 Moosehead Trail in Newport. Whether it's tractors and zero turns, chainsaws to trimmers, or pressure washers to snow blowers, everything is set up, serviced, and ready to go by our certified Husqvarna technician. And all sales are backed by our in-house Husqvarna warranty. For parts, service, or sales, stop in to Hanks Husqvarna, Carmel, or Newport. The first major awards ceremony of 2023 took place last night in a rain-soaked Beverly Hills, but it didn't dampen the excitement at this year's 80th Golden Globe Awards. Here's ABC's Will Gantz. Hollywood's Golden Night is back. The Oscar goes to... No, no. Oh, no, no, wait, it's Golden Globe, Golden Globe, Golden Globe, okay. The biggest stars of film and television reuniting at the Beverly Hilton Hotel in Hollywood for the Golden Globes. The Golden Globe goes to... Angela Bassett, baby, come on! Yes! Brad Pitt, Rihanna, Margot Robbie, all back together following years of controversy surrounding the lack of diversity in the Hollywood yeah. Foreign Press Association. Like one minute, you're making mint tea at home. The next, you're invited to be the black faced of an embattled white organization. <laughs> Comedian Gerard Carmichael explaining his decision to host said, with his signature dollars. deadpan. She said, Boy, if you don't put on a good suit and take them white people money. And the big winners of the night Abbott Elementary. Thank you for believing in this show about a group of teachers from Philadelphia. It has resonated with the world in a way that I couldn't even imagine it would have. But let's be real, I did imagine that's why I sold it to you. Thank you. And everything everywhere all at once. Eddie Murphy honored with the Cecil B. DeMille Award, offering advice to up-and-comers. And keep Will Smith's wife's name. Mouth! But the fan favorite. Wow, I am. Um... Yeah, I can I'm, I can put this down, right? No, I just, uh, uh, I don't work out, you know what I mean? I can't hold it that long. Jennifer Coolidge, thanking White Lotus creator Mike White. You sort of changed my life in a million different ways, and my neighbors are speaking to me, things like that. So what does all of this mean for the Oscars? Well, the Banshees of Inna Sharon and the Fablemans are early favorites for Best Film. Michelle Yeoh will square off against Kate Blanchett for Best Actress. And Austin Butler took home last night's award for Best Actor for playing Elvis, which makes him a frontrunner heading into the rest of awards season. A lot to be excited about there. I love Will's sport coat. I'll say it again. Got to yeah. get, get one of those crushed purple velvet things. So. I'd say so. Yeah. We can be matchy. Yeah. <laughs> Styling. All yeah. right. Now on to our forecast with Devin Biggs.
All right, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. Overall, not too bad out there this morning. Again, a lot of clear skies. You might notice some patchy fog, but it will be very hit and miss in a few spots. Observations haven't shown much fog this morning, so we should be okay. Shouldn't be anything widespread should we encounter that. But we're going to be watching our next system located right about in here, actually. And we're going to be watching this thing tracking off towards the east over time. And at least by tomorrow night through Friday, a wind stream mix swishing over to rain will be expected with some warming temperatures that will also begin to move in. And I'm sure many of you have heard about the activity going on in parts of California with this area of low pressure right here. And just flows of moisture moving in as well. Plenty of rain and snow in places that have seen just too much of it in a short amount of time. So moving forward, though, again, for today, in our neck of the woods, a lot of sunshine, maybe a few passing clouds out there. But by tonight, more clouds will approach ahead of our next system. And most of Thursday should be dry as clouds moving in and slight chances for snow later in the day. Better opportunities will move in later on as we head towards Thursday night and parts of Friday with some snow in areas. So it's switching over to rain with temperatures that will be rising over time. So the general idea looks a little bit like this. So the system will begin to move in. Here's 6 o'clock in the evening on Thursday. Most of this will start to move in. A little bit of a wintry mix expected as we'll see some snow and some rain. But notice the transition line moving to the north. So we'll see the switching over to all rain with temperatures that could get close to 50 at times as we head towards your Friday and some gusty winds as well. But notice the timing of the system. A lot of this will be out of here by Saturday. So by Saturday afternoon, most of the activity will be out of the area and we'll be done with that overall. But more precipitation, again, at least this is going to count some of the melted down snow and all the rainfall expected to one to two inches of rain before we're all finished up. So looking pretty decent out there overall and a little bit of snow in the northern ends of the state as well. Not so much for our neck of the woods, so maybe a few inches early before it all melts and maybe a little bit more further off towards the north before some of that melts, of course, with the rising temperatures and the rainfall expected. Our average high temperature is 28 degrees for this time of the year to switch over to temperatures real quick. We'll be in the upper 20s today. So right near average, middle 30s Thursday, getting close to 50 degrees for your Friday, maybe falling just a little bit short and cooling off again to the 20s and 30s moving forward for the next several days afterward. So your forecast for today, upper 20s, mostly sunny, north wind getting up to about 5 miles per hour. Later on tonight, 16 degrees, mostly cloudy, with the wind overall looking nice and calm. Looking at towards tomorrow, 34 degrees, mostly cloudy, a slight chance for snow later in the afternoon. Southeast wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's a look at your extended forecast. So our winter mix switches over to all rain for your Friday. Temperatures in the upper 40s. We start to dry out by Saturday. Mostly cloudy temperatures in the mid-30s. Upper 20s on Sunday with a mostly sunny sky. It's your journey. Own every mile in an available H-Track all-wheel drive Hyundai SUV. Get 2.9% APR financing for up to 48 months on select Hyundai vehicles. Visit your local Hyundai dealer today. At Bouchard Cleaning, rebuilding and restoring means more than just another job. To us, it's about bringing back cherished memories, restoring unforgettable moments in time, and giving hope when all was thought to be lost. For over 35 years, our mission has remained the same. You keep the memories, we'll handle the rest. Statewide commercial and residential services. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. Who can you call when you need immediate help, any time of day or night? Always giving you and your family peace of mind. AAA's legendary roadside assistance is a network with over 50,000 vehicles that respond to more than 32 million assistance calls every year. If something happens and we're broken down, my family is not going to be stranded. There are so many benefits to membership, and AAA is there if you're locked out of your car, need a tow, run out of gas, have a flat tire, or a dead battery. You know, if you have one flat tire or one battery service, that membership fee pays for itself. Wherever you go, wherever you are, you can trust AAA to be there when you need them. Join today and a full year of AAA membership is just $53. We'll waive the membership admission fee and as a special bonus, you'll receive a one-year membership for an eligible family member. Don't wait another second. Call to join AAA right now.
drive-thru patrons at the Medford, Massachusetts Duncan.